And it says it's live now. All right. So <laughs> this is stressful. All um, right. In the event page, I gave another link, Crystal, okay. that goes to okay. the second event, and you guys hopefully can come on over and see us here. So we shall see. Okay, perfect. If you guys can let us know that you're there, just one person. Just right one. now, there's nobody. <laughs> if anyone could just let us know you're there. Um, Is this crazy, y'all? I don't. There's, we can't control it. We really can't. I mean, oh, it is so frustrating. I know. I know. I mean, I put on makeup for this, and people took off work for this, and I mean, I get it. It's very frustrating. <clears throat> so Kim's asking a question. I'm hoping she can see it. That means that she can see us. Hello, lady. Hey, Kim. Okay. So I'm guessing that means you can see us over here in our new event and Sue good job okay Yay. all right so we had some technical difficulties that were beyond our control we knew that they did, we didn't even know they were going on until you were telling us on our end everything looked fine so let's just pick up where we were leaving off we have uh, Jennifer Fishkind with us who is a power pinner and has a phenomenal Pinterest board with 3.7 million followers and um, she was in the midst of telling us her techniques um, and what she's um, doing how, like how many pins she does, how often she does. I don't remember where we got lost. Well, um, if you were talking, you were also talking about what kind of photos work well. We were talking about not over styling them. Um, if you just kind of want to go over some of that again. Right. So we we're talking about, um, you know, depending on if you're pinning something that's a, like a, a single food item or a single project as opposed to a collage. They both work well, depending on, and I would, I would pin them both. I mean, it, it, there's been times where I've had, um, you know, a, a one particular picture from a post, and I also have a collage that I'll kind of trade off and repin, and I'll see which one does better, and that's the one that I'll continue to pin with. But if it's a collage, um, you know, making a real a bold title to it so that people know what they're looking at. They don't necessarily have to read the description, um, but they know that they're getting a lot of ideas from this one pin and by going to this one site. Um, the 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 um, single item. So if it's a piece of you know cake, or it's a cupcake, or it's again in one a single project that you're working on. Those two great too. But I would you know try to keep the image as clean as you can. You know I like the lighter backgrounds. Um, the close-ups do really well of the food. Um, so just keep those in mind. But part of it is just trial and error and seeing what works well for your audience. Um, yeah. One thing I was going to say to keep in mind is when we overstyle things, people don't know where to look. When you take an image and you just totally overstyle it, they don't know where their eyes should go, but also it really dates your image and it prevents it from being evergreen. So if we know that, you know, in 2012 it was really popular on PicMonkey or on Picnic or whatever you were using at the time to style your image this way with this font and to use these borders and whatever, you are taking something that could potentially be evergreen content and dating it. Because now when somebody sees it, they're going to say, oh, well, that was from a couple of years ago. That's not a current Valentine craft or whatever. So do you also want to talk, Jennifer, about you have a friend that does marketing and she, she was telling yeah, me. Yeah, I was just I was just going to say that. So, you know, I've been I've recently been playing with PicMonkey and, and trying to do more of the collages and stuff. And I've, you know, one of the things that she told me is just because there's um, a tool to do something doesn't mean you need to use it. So it doesn't mean you need to add the little clip arts to it, and you need to add the borders to it, and you need to add, you know, the overlays and all that. Um, sometimes less is more, and especially with Pinterest because they're flipping through this really fast. You know, they're scrolling down. So I would definitely keep that in mind that um, you want to um, keep it keep it on the simpler side so that it can catch people's eyes better. You don't need to use all the the different pieces. Right. Exactly. Um, okay. So do now. We, I want to get into the nuts and bolts of how you're actually making the money. Yeah, me too. I mean, we have lots of questions coming in, <coughs> but I really want to, yeah, let's talk about money. <laughs> All right. Talk about I like money. Money. <laughs> money makes me happy. Tell us exactly what you're doing. Ready, set, go. Okay, right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working with a couple of different, um, a couple of different companies. <laughs> 
that um, focus on you know influencer um, affiliate marketing. And one of them is Reward Style and one is Flow Society and they've both been great. They're amazing to work with. Um, I've done really well with both of them. They're very different. Um, reward Style is more where you, you know, they, they've got a, a, an incredible amount of retailers that you can work with. And is, what's up? I was just going to say, guys, this is like affiliates. Mm -hmm. like affiliate sales. Like like Amazon. Go ahead. Right, right. But the, you know, and they but so they have you know everyone from Nordstrom's to Madcloth, you know, J. Crew, um, Target, Target, William Sonoma, um, you know, and then there's a lot of also little more mom and pop ones as well, and they all you know they all offer different types of commission. You know, you kind of everyone is different and how it works and how the commissions are closed and all that. But they have, a, they have something called a Link Ninja that goes into your toolbar. So when you're surfing the internet, so for instance, I'm on Nordstrom's and I see a top that I really like, I click my Link Ninja, it connects it to my Pinterest, it puts my affiliate link in there, and then I can you know, write my description, you know, love this top, and you know, pin it and it goes into my feed. So then if somebody clicks on that, you know, that link, it takes them to my, um, to, to the actual retailer page, and the, what what's really nice about it is so you clicked on this top and you decided you didn't want to buy that top but you wanted to buy something else there something else caught your eye um, and maybe not today maybe in a month from now as long as my link was the last one they've clicked from there and not someone else's affiliate link I'll make commission based on what they purchase within like I think it's the next 30 days so you know what's what's great is that these pins are you know can go viral they can be out there for you know for months and you know, I might make a sale of something of a flip flop that I pinned in July, but it's still circulating through the you know through Pinterest. Someone clicks on it and goes and buys it, and I'm you know making a commission off of it six months later. Um, right. So you know, the strategy with that one is what's going to get people to the retailer site. What's going to drive them to the site? What types of products are your followers interested in? Mine are going to be different than Crystal's, and they're going to be different than Kelly's. It just depends on what you know, who's following you, and and what they like, and what kind of things you like. And you know, I try to keep, it, I, I do, I keep it to things that I like. It might not be the bikini that I'm going to wear because I'm not going to wear a bikini. But if I could wear a bikini, this would be the one that I would wear. Um, <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so it's it's what's going to you know what's going to again get people to those sites because. Once they're there, then that's how you're really making your income is by what they're buying once they're there. It might not even be anything like you 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 pinned about. So, um, so what Jennifer's doing is she is pinning this stuff from Reward Style where it's affiliate marketing. It's a, it's an opportunity for her to make an affiliate income, and she's making a full time income off of that. But outside of that, she's also filling her Pinterest boards with things from blogs, with things from our blogs, with current Valentine activity. So she may have a Valentine board, and she may pin my printable Valentine card to that Valentine board. But she'll yeah, also plug, by the way. But she'll, but she'll also pin it to her Need Want Love board, which is also her mega board that she's promoting her market, you know, the things, the affiliate network stuff on that she's trying to make money off of. So she's pinning multiple things in multiple places and mixing the affiliate stuff with the things that she's finding on blogs. Right? So, I might, yeah, so, so I might pin, you know, 10 retail products and then a couple of things, you know, that are more lifestyle and interest and recipes and, and you know, activities types of things. So it doesn't just become salesy. Um, you know, the other one, Hello Society, I, saw, I think you said somebody was asking about it, again, as a great company. They work more on, like, campaigns. So they'll say, you know, um, we're working with this retailer. You know, maybe it's, it's you know, um, Joe's and Maine or um, uh, Chickwish or something like that. And you go to that site and you use their, they've got a tool as well, like the Link Ninja, that you're going to then go and click on and you're going to, it's you know it could be based on your number of clicks. It could be based on um, number of acquisitions. So if somebody signs up for a flash sale site like Zulily, um, you, you're getting income based on how many people you sign up. Um, they also have flat campaigns where um, if you have you know a big board, they might say, okay, you need to pin you know this number of pins from this site um, every day for a week, and you get a flat you know a flat amount for that. 
And you know that that's great too. What I love about both of these is that I'm not pinning anything I don't like. No one's making me pin anything. You know, I don't have to pin from you know a site that I choose not to. I can choose to accept them or I can choose not to. And I think that's part of what's made me successful is that I'm not polluting my board with things that I don't like. Right. <clears throat> it's things that you that you like and want. It's genuine. Um, and if you make money off of it, great. <laughs> That's even more the better. Kelly, what are some more questions that are coming through? I'm trying to get our new uh, Hangout link in all the places where I had promoted previously. <laughs> so um, do you see any questions? Any? I know there are a lot of questions that are coming in. Everybody says they lost us at what times she was pinning. So I'm just going to run back through that real quick. For her, now you okay, here's the thing with anybody, anything that we tell you. You're going to have to test it to see if that fits your audience. But for Jennifer, um, she pins from about 6 a.m. Eastern Time till about 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And then she pins again from about 3 p.m. Eastern until she finally goes to sleep. So she doesn't do much of anything between 10 and 3 on her pinning. Right. Weekend mornings are great. I mean, bright and early Saturday mornings are great. And even throughout the day, Saturday, usually not in the middle of the day, but towards sun, later in the day, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock. Sunday mornings also very good. Um, so, you know, we're, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people, you know, don't necessarily think about getting, you know, doing it on the weekends. But if you think about it, you're sitting there with a cup of coffee, you're sitting on your computer or your iPad, and you're kind of going through it. It, it, it those are good times for me as well. Well, and one thing that you can do, what I love about using Viral Tag, and Kelly can talk about Ahology because I don't, I don't use it and I don't know anything about it, but on Viral Tag, I can go in and there's a tracking tool that will actually show me. I thought that my best board was my preschool board. Well, come to find out, when I go into my tracking tool with Viral Tag, I see that my best board with the most repens is actually my mommy solution board, which is also a group board, which we'll talk about group boards in a minute. But now I know that is my hitter. When I'm pinning during my prime times, during those prime times that Jennifer was talking about, 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time and 3 o'clock Eastern Time to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, when I'm pinning during those times, I need to make sure I'm hitting that Mommy Solution board because that's the board that's getting the repins for me. And I keep an eye on that to see, you know, last week Holly Homer promoted something of mine that was um, on Kids Activities blog, my preschool board. So for a day, that board had the most repins. But we have to keep a close eye on those analytics so that we know how to optimize the success and the exposure that we're getting. Were you going to say something, Kelly? Um, just Adrienne wants to know what analytics you use, Jennifer. Um, I, I mean, I've used um, Viral Pin. Um, Kelly and, and, and Chris actually led me into that one. And I, I, viral right? Tag. Viral Tag. Oh, viral Tag, sorry. Um, but the, you know, Pinterest actually, they, I don't know if you ever go into their analytics. They're not great, but they're okay. They they have some interesting analytics tools in there. Um, so I do look at that once in a while. Also, um, Hello Society um, has something called um, Hello Insights that also has decent analytic to analytics. Um, Reward Style has their own analytics as well, which I use so I can see what my you know as far as from sales purposes, how many clicks I've had, how many sales I've had based you know on, on those particular items. Um, so I, I kind of use a, a whole bunch of them to to look to look around, um, you know. And I keep trying new ones. I haven't found the one that really gets me like excited yet. That does everything that I don't have to go to a million different places for. So I'm still looking for that. So if anyone knows any, send it my way. But Kelly, you use Ahology to tell you what your prime pinning time is, right? Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Ahology doesn't really tell you yours. It just tells you. It just automatically schedules into what they think of, are the best times. Okay. Which they've done a lot of research, so they should know. Yeah. You know, there's there's well, a lot of people out there who have a lot of best practices for Pinterest, and you know, a lot to say about Pinterest and how how to do it. Um, I think the best thing you can do is is watch, just watch and see your trends. Try different things. Try pinning at different times and seeing when you know, when it's taking off and, you know, then continue to play with those and refine those. But, you know, I, you know, 
I, I, I don't read a ton of those articles as to you know when the best time to pin is and when you know what because I think it's very different for every person. And depending on who's following you and what you know what their their lifestyles are like, it's it's gonna make a big difference. So you really have to kind of figure it out and just watch and learn as to what what happens with, with you know your own your own pins. Right. Especially when you consider what your demographic is, you know, if the majority of your followers are all working um, outside of the home, then that's going to change the trend on when they're pinning and what they're seeing. And if right. the majority of them are stay-at-home moms, then that's going to affect it. They're going to be looking during nap time, during early, early morning time before anybody gets up. I all of them that are, yeah, all of those are things to consider. Um, and it depends on what you're pinning. Come on. I mean, it's so funny to me that she says that 10 to 3 is not good for her, but that's 10 to 3 is the absolute best time for me when I'm doing blogging pins, when I'm doing um, all of our learn to blog articles, when all of that stuff because bloggers are on Pinterest at that time. They've written their posts for the day, they've done part of their social media, they've scheduled their pins during their optimal time, they've posted their Facebook stuff during their optimal time and now they're looking for other things and that's when they're on Pinterest. Well and so, that, that goes right to having to know your audience, you know. My audience are shoppers. They like to shop, and they're you know, and so they're out you know at, at their job. So maybe maybe a little bit during lunch hours, you know, but in the morning and in the night, you know, especially like I said, the later I can go, which is why Viral Chat is so good because, um, I, you know, you can you can schedule those later because I can't stay up that late. Well, right now there's a lot of chatter going on on the event page. Well, another thing I want people to think about, and we touched Sorry. on this, and I don't know if it was when we got knocked off or, or whatever, but I want you to also think outside the box. Yes, Reward Style, Hello Society, those are all great avenues for making an income off of Pinterest, but I want you to also think about the fact that in your media kit you can start offering, start at a very small amount, say for $25 you'll pin something for a brand, add that as, a, as an add-on to somebody that you're selling something to. So if you get a sponsored post you can say for an additional $10 or $25 or whatever it is, I will also pin this to my most repinned featured board or my board with the most followers. Just think outside the box starting small how you can maximize or begin to create an income off of Pinterest. It doesn't have to be exactly how Jennifer's doing it because your, your following may not be shoppers like hers. Right. Your following may be something different. So um, I, I just want you to think outside the box and consider all of these things. For, and um, for the, real quick, Crystal, for those of you, because I, I do see some of the comments coming through about people who are using um, you know, some of these affiliate companies that I'm working with, like, like you know, Reward Style. One thing I'd say is if you're if you're having a hard time getting started with it, one thing that I did and I still do is I'll go look at um, some of the retailers' Pinterest pages like Nordstrom's, which is one of my biggest retailers, and I'll see what they're pinning and what's repinning well for them, and I'll go and try to repin those types of things with my affiliate link on it. So um, if you know if if you it's a good way to kind of start to see what has resonated with with other audiences and see what has, has repinned well. So you might want to you know try thinking about that too. Um, a lot of people are really concerned about the fact that it's affiliate links with Pinterest. <laughs> I was yep. concerned about the same thing, but let me say something um, that Jennifer said and I did a lot of research on as well. Reward style is used by the creator of Pinterest's mother. Mm -hmm. So, they say no affiliate links, but they work very closely. Pinterest and reward style actually work very closely with each other. So, in my head, it makes me think they don't want just random affiliate links because they need to make their cut. So, think about that. Well, and um, my understanding is from what I've read, and Kelly, maybe you can elaborate on this a little bit, but the FTC does not mention Pinterest. Right. So that is, now this could change, guys. Everything is always changing. But I tell you that Jennifer will be the first one to stand up and tell you that companies like Nordstrom, Williams Sonoma, Kohl's, Target, these companies are counting on these affiliate programs. I mean, they have invested mega bucks to make this work. And there are tons of people doing this. It is, at this point, Utilizing reward style is not breaking the rules, um, and 
you know, could that change? Absolutely. But right now, this is something that is an option. But like I said, there's other ways to make money too. Go ahead. Yeah, it can change any minute, and that definitely scares me. Um, but until it does, you know, let's let's go, let's party. Um, you know, I I know a couple of people have asked about a viral tag and using reward style with it in Hello Society. Viral um, reward style, yes, and Hello Society. I think I'm, you can do it now. They just Hello Society just made some changes to their dashboard, so um, now you can you can pull up your um, affiliate link, and so you can copy and paste it into um, the the viral tag area where you could put the link in. So you just need to actually change out your link to be your when you um, you, you just copy your specific um, and unique reward style link or hello society link and then you copy and paste it into the viral tag area where it asks for the URL. Right. Yeah, you can. And and one thing that I also wanted to talk about because a lot of people were asking before we got cut off before that um, we they wanted to know how to grow your board. So we talked about you know how people can get features in the Pinterest newsletter or what have you. For me, one of the best ways that I have found to grow my boards, and I I mean I am not being paid by Viral Tag. I've never talked to anyone at Viral Tag, but I'm telling you that has changed my pinning habits and the and what Pinterest does for me on so many levels because what it allows me to have a steady stream of pins constantly going out. And in turn, I'm showing up in people's feeds 24-7, okay? So in one day, I will gain 100 Pinterest followers. I track this. I watch it. So granted, I'm only growing at 100 a day. I'm not growing at 10,000 a day. But that right now has been a nice way for me to see steady growth. Kelly, are you experiencing the same? Absolutely. Because I'm able to go in and... and <laughs> I'm able to go in to Pinterest and I'm able to go into the popular pins and I can reschedule those to go out through the day so when people when you pin something it tells you that these other people have pinned it to these boards and it gives you a list and you can and I follow people from that um, I can't be the only person that follows the other people that have pinned to something I, I can't be the only one that follows the boards the other boards that that pin has gone to because that's what I like, so I want to see more of that. So if you're right. popping up as one of those boards, you're going to get more followers. And the only way to pop up as one of those boards is to be pinning that popular stuff. So, yes, absolutely, it's made a big difference for me as a viral tag. Well, and something else I will say is go and, you know, go on to some boards Find people that you want to recognize you. Maybe one of those people is Jennifer. Maybe one of those people is, you know, the wife of the person that created Pinterest. Whatever it is, when you find these boards that have, that have millions of followers, go into their board, repin some of their stuff, and you can do you could repin 50 things in a, in 10 seconds using Viral Tag, and then go to some of their pins and like them. So click that little heart and leave a comment, a genuine comment that makes you stand out, like. Oh, you know, my whatever it is, something that is an original, authentic comment that not everybody else is leaving. Crystal, and, I'll totally agree with you on that. And the yeah. comment, especially on the comments, the repins, I'll be honest, I had to turn off my notifications because I don't I would get yeah, it but, all day. But um, all the people that follow you see those. Right. They see exactly. the people that are repinning. So Right, 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 true. But the the comments, <laughs> like for me, those stand those really stand out for me. And I try to comment back to people whenever I can. Um, you know, I, I love the comments. I love getting them, except for the mean ones. I really hate those, and they make me sad. Um, but the other ones I really like, and I will, if, if I see someone who's very active on my on my board, I'll go back and follow them. Um, you know, especially if I see that they're having similar tastes to things that I like, then I'll go and follow them, because sometimes it gives me ideas of things that I'm going to go repin, you know, pin up later. So I totally echo what you say on, on, on the cut for sure the comments. Um, Jennifer, do you have um, any suggestions on? There's some really good questions coming in. Adrian wants to know how we find the influential pinners. Well, one thing that I do is when somebody like Jennifer says, "Go look up this person's Pinterest board because she is so and so and she has you know five million followers." I go and look her up and I do what we just said. I leave comments, etc. And I have been repinned that way. Um, and then Adrian also wants to know more about how we're scheduling with Viral Tag. So, um, and what we, time frames? Yes, we have ahead. a video on Viral Tag, guys. I don't think we need to take up our time using. Um, I'll, I'll 
I'll go in and see if I can find it so that they can watch it. But we screen share and everything exactly how to do, use Viral Tag. Yes, I think it was last. Very, week. it's very intuitive too. It's very easy. I think it was last week. But I mean, just real quickly, I just, you know, I in my tribe, my tribe mates, we will repin things of each other. So I will go to their boards and pick 25 things on one of their boards and repin them and have them go out. I do every 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes 60 minutes is how far I spread my pins out. Kelly, you usually do 100 minutes, right? We all have different methods. Well, it depends. Um, for the most part, and I'm breaking all the rules, but. For the most part, I go in, and at the even times, I have my pins going out, and at the odd times, I have other people's pins going out, so that I have one pin every single hour. Absolutely right. That's what I sit down and do every morning, is I sit down, and I schedule one pin every single hour using Viral Tag. Mm -hmm. Mine, theirs, mine, theirs, mine, theirs. Then... I go into Pinterest, I look at stuff, if somebody, if I see something throughout the day that I like, I go ahead and pin it, or if I have several boards that I want to pin it to, I, I, go to, I use my viral tag button and I hit upload now so that they go out 10 minutes apart instead of just a whole bunch of all, all at one time. Um, but no matter what, I have 24 pins going out every day. And then I usually have more than that because I pin throughout the day. But And, and I would say double it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I mean, I would, I would double. I, I would, I would try to at least double it, um, if if you can, if you've got the time to to set those up. The more the better, you know. If someone's not interested, they're gonna they're gonna stop following you. But that you, the more you can get your 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 name out there, I think the more possibly that Pinterest will see you and that others are gonna see you. And your stuff's gonna repin and people are gonna start then. I think you know following you more. So the more you can do, the better. And don't be afraid of. Pinning stuff, you know, back to back, and you know, I'll, when I go in, I, I'm I'm doing it boom, 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 um, one after another. And I agree with that. I will go in, you know, right now Valentine is popular, and I that's what a lot of people are searching for in my niche. And so, I will go into my tribe mates and pull up their Valentine board, and use Viral Tag to repin 50 of those pins. And then I'll go to my next tribe mates. And board how and often? And you schedule it for you say 50, and you schedule it for 30 minutes. I do. I schedule them for 30 to 45 minutes apart. 45 minutes is my most common. I can't see you right now, Kelly, but I'm imagining that you're like your eyes are bulging out of your head because you're probably thinking that's crazy, but I do. And then I will have like three solid days worth of pens going out. Um, right. That is, and so because this is my thought. I want to be the Valentine board that people come to. I want for people to say, Crystal and Co. has every Valentine. You know, listen, I'm I'm not trying to to boast or whatever, but recently my sister in law was talking to one of her friends at or their kids' school about homeschool stuff, and the girl says, "I want to homeschool." My sister in law says, "I I really um you really should go and check out my sister in law's blog and her Pinterest board." She goes, "I just I as soon as she said her as soon as my sister in law told her my name, she goes, I was just on her Pinterest board. She has tons of homeschool stuff." This person knew, and I have a constant steady feed of homeschool stuff going out, or Valentine stuff going out, or easy recipes, whatever it is that I'm focusing on that I want to be the go-to place for. That's how I do it. Um, that's what I do. So I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it's working for me. So give it a try and see how it works with your audience. You know. Anyway, all right. So um, um, one other quick thing that we talked about um, when we were talking before was. Using the keywords um, in the drop-down menu when you're yeah. um, doing when you're when you're put, doing your comments. Mm -hmm. So it, you know in your, your your photo as well, but in your comments, if you want to do something you know from your blog, you know cute Valentine's Day treats, you might want to go search at the top left corner of Pinterest and see what people are searching for. So is it Valentine's treats? Is it do-it-yourself Valentine's treats? So that it, it'll it'll pull in. You know, I do a lot of searching on Pinterest. I was. Yesterday I was looking for you know quick family friendly you know um, meals and um, you know when I was writing a blog post and it, it that helped me to determine what I was going to put in the blog post po post and use for my keywords in my blog post because I knew people would be searching for them that and it helps me know what to add into my comments as well. Yes, I like that idea because I do go onto Pinterest often and search for you know, letter I preschool crafts or whatever. So pay attention to what it's pulling down the same way that you do 
on um, on Google. Uh, Peggy wanted to know how do you know what are the most popular pins on Pinterest at any given given time, trends, etc. Knowing things are always changing, so there is a place that you can go and look at what's popular, and you just go to your main dashboard. Um, isn't that right, guys? That's I yeah. It's up in the um in the the drop down. If you go like at the top left, I think it is. There's a thing that pulls down that has categories, and one of them I think is popular pens. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. So when you start typing that, and maybe you you should know this, Jennifer. Maybe hopefully. Okay. So if I go into Pinterest and I start typing Super Bowl, and it pops up all the different words, but it also pops up a board. Is that board just popping up because it's mine, or are other people seeing that board as well? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, other people are probably. I mean, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. When you're starting to type it in, that at the bottom of that, when you're doing a search, um, if if you are following a board or it's your board, it'll it'll pop those up. For, like at the bottom part of the search, you know what I'm saying? So yes. the drop part of the drop down, that's one. So yeah, it, it's it's because it's your board. That one is because it's your board. But sorry, yeah. All right, go ahead. What are your thoughts on group boards? Um, for me personally, um, I don't use group boards that much, but that's because mostly that, you know, they don't benefit me because I have a large following. I don't get lots of great repins from stuff on group boards. But having said that, I do think that there's a great benefit to them. Um, and I, I'd say if you're trying to grow your Pinterest following, absolutely participate in group boards. Um, you know, when somebody, if you're on a group board for, you know, cupcakes, and, you, you know, someone comes in and, um, and, and sees that, and they click the, they want to click the follow all button to someone else's, so someone else had, you know, they're on someone else's site, and they saw that cupcake pin in the group board, they're following all the boards then, so they're following that one too, so you have a really good chance of seeing, of gaining a bigger audience when you, when you pin on that. So I would be selective on which group boards you go on to, but I would definitely say that it's, it's a, it's a good use of your time, and a good yeah. use of throwing pins on there too. I think so too. And my board that gets the most repins is a group board. And so once I realized that, I reached out to my tribe and to other people and said, if you want to be a part of this board, um, let me know. I would love to add you. Because in my mind, the more mommy solutions that I can have pinned to that board, the more people are going to come tonight to my Pinterest board for, for mommy solutions. So um, you may get with your tribe. And, you know, Kelly, you want to talk about that? You did that in our tribe, creating yeah. a group. In our tribe, yeah, in our tribe, we, um, we have a group board. And the reason that we have a group board, it's not necessarily to gain more followers, and it's not necessarily to try to get all those things repinned. The reason that I set up a group board is because our tribe mates can all go to that group board when they're looking to fill up their schedule. They can go to that group board, they hit their viral tag button, they choose the ones that are not theirs or that interest them, and boom, they can schedule them, they can repin them all at once. It's, it's done right there, and they are reaching out to their followers um, with those pins. So it's an, it's an easy way for me to repin the things that, that Crystal thinks are her best items. So she's pinned them to that board so that we can see them. Right. right. So the idea is we each go in and each day pin a couple of our current things or old things to this group board, and then the rest of the group can go into Viral Tag and do the domino effect. Um, I love what Megan said. She said that talking about scheduling stuff on Viral Tag, she's tested it. She separated them out every 60 minutes, 32 minutes. That's an interesting time. 20 minutes and 15 minutes, and 32 minutes was her sweet spot. But I think it's different for everyone. You've got to test something, stick with it for a few days, and evaluate how things go. And that's so true. You have got to pay attention to your analytics and see if these efforts are paying off. Um, <clears throat> I know some people that schedule them a thousand minutes apart, so that's a full day. So that well, every I do that too for some things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just play with it and keep an eye on the tracking and analytics and see what you are getting in return for that. And then in turn you'll know if it's if it's working or not and, and how to change it. So I stick to 30 to 45 minutes for most of my stuff and it works well for me. So um, all right, what else did we want to cover on our list, Kelly, of questions for Jennifer? Um, you know, one, 
Well, one thing that you had said, Jennifer, and I don't know if you got to say this today or not with all the in and out that we had, but um, in regards to using the affiliate stuff and making money on Pinterest, one of the things that you do is you go in and follow those retailers that you love. So you follow Nordstrom and then you watch their, their trends. Do you want to talk about that? Yep. Um, yeah, I hit a little bit, but yes, you know, I'll follow all my major retailers. You know, um, I, you know, um, Nordstrom, Macy, um, Williams Sonoma. Um, you know, any of the ones that I know do well for me. Mod Cloth, Urban Outfitters. Um, you know, so I, I'll I'll follow them to see what what's what they're repaying and what's repaying well, and also what shops that they feel you know, are important, are, you know, that are good good for Pinterest because, you know, they've got huge marketing departments behind them. Right. And, you know, they're, they're spending a lot of time trying to figure out what is the right, the right, you know, uh, product shot for, you know, for Pinterest. And I'll also take the same product, you know, maybe a, a model wearing it and, you know, it just on a, um, you know, blank background and see which one pins better for me. Usually it's the one not on the model, which is interesting. But um, you know, sometimes it is. So you, I see which one works best, and I'll try both of them. Um, the other thing I saw, I did see a comment come out asking how to how to you know do affiliate links in my in my blog. Um, one of the the things that I like to do is um, like Target and Williams Sonoma and a bunch of those sites now will have recipes on their you know on their website. That they'll use, you know, for, with their products, and you know, there's a whole recipe site on Williams Sonoma. I'll use one of their recipes in one of my roundups, but I'll put my affiliate link in there. So then, if they go, if someone goes to look at the, the the recipe, I can, uh, you know, they my affiliate link is in there. So if they go back and buy something at Williams Sonoma, I'm getting commission off it. It's just another way to continue to drive, you know, traffic right. both ways. And, and I remember at Christmas time you were telling us, Kelly and I, about how you had pinned some stuff over the summer and it was just now yeah. um, getting picked up and, and getting real traction at Christmas time with purchases. So, you know, think outside of the box again, guys. So something that I did at Christmas was I started a, a board that was all about gift giving. So that was stuff that I was repinning from reward style. But then also reward style stuff was being pinned on my fashion board, on my mommy solution boards, etc. So just think of different ways that you can capitalize on that. And, you know, if it's working, continue to do it. Um, Sue had asked back to the beginning because we had gotten cut off and she said, is there a special way to get Pinterest attention to one of those suggested people to follow to get the initial 10 million followers? Sue, so there's just not um, a magic answer to that. Um, it's, you know, those that have gotten featured in Pinterest, in the Pinterest newsletter, the, you know, those people will get 10,000 plus followers very quickly. Um, when Jennifer was featured by Pinterest in the very beginning, that was in the early, early stages. Um, when, you know, when, when you would sign up, things were actually handled differently then. Really, I think it's what we talked about earlier. The best way to get... Uh, seen by some of these bigger pinners is to go onto their boards and pin their stuff but leave authentic comments. Um, I really think that that's a great way to get noticed. But also utilizing viral tag to have a constant study and using your tribe so that you're constantly having content that is within your niche to repin from each other. And the more that you can get yourself out there, the more that you can show up and feed the quicker you're going to grow your following. Don't you ladies agree? Yeah, and if you go to Pinterest.com, a lot of you were asking how can I tell what's popular? And I mean, when I say that, I mean popular right that very second. If you go to Pinterest, I'm going to Pinterest here. Hold on. <laughs> oh, come on. It's going to take me home. I don't want to be home. Okay. If you go to Pinterest, and you start scrolling, it tells you how many pins. I'm trying to find one that has pins. I don't see one that has pins. Crud. Okay, well, never mind. But let me find something else. Hold on. Super Bowl. Superman. All right. It tells you right here how many pins these items have. Okay, Superman by Shy Fly has 265 pins. So if this is something that interests me, then I can repin this. And I can click on it, 
I can see what board it's pinned to. Vicki has pinned it to this board. Why is it getting so many repins? Okay, she has 75,000 followers. Maybe this is a board I want to follow. Maybe I want to leave some comments on some of her other pins. That's how I do it. That's how I see what's big or what's popular right now. Well, and something else to think about, and Kim Vidge touched on this a little bit. She talked earlier about the ways that you can track, so using viral tag to track your analytics, Tailwind, which I've signed up for but never used it, Hello Society, Insight, Reward Style Analytics, Ahology. She says all of those are great, but Jennifer will probably tell you that she didn't use these as she grew her boards, and that's right. She showed us, told us earlier how she grew. Um, we in. Kim says that she has yet to use them too. But just like your blog, make your boards reflect your voice that you want online and the message that's important to you. So Kelly and I have talked about this in previous Hangouts. When your Pinterest board loads, and this is something we talk about in our class that we offer too. When your Pinterest boards load your account, what is above old is your prime real estate, just the same as your blog. And so whatever's loading there should be your current content that you're pushing. So my top two rows are changing based on the seasons, based on the trends, based on what's going on. So I have my main mommy solution board that I want everybody to see, but then I also have what's hot right now, which is Valentine's, easy recipes, getting dinner on the table. So think about that as well, so that when your account loads and people find you, what are the hot things that are relevant that make you amazing to follow? Don't you agree, Kelly? Yeah, I switch out mine on a regular basis as well. And also, oh, yeah. what what the cover the cover page like the cover um, is of that particular board is also important because yeah. people are just you know checking that out real quick. Yep, I agree. I agree because some of those images can get dated. Yeah. You're exactly right to change yeah. them out. Um, were you going to say something else, Kelly? And I don't even. It doesn't have to be my my um, picture image. Yeah, uh -huh. like right now, looking at my Valentine board, I think that's Chrissy's image. Where I yeah. her post. I mean, it's a great picture. I'm pretty sure that's Chrissy's. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm constantly going through and seeing which picture is going to sell this. Which picture is worthy of the cover of the magazine? What is going to get people to click on this board and come in and go through it and, and see it as value? So, I mean, you have... I know it's a lot of stuff, guys, that you have to pay attention to, but just dedicate 15 minutes to going in and scheduling stuff, making sure that your prime real estate's above the fold on Pinterest, making sure that you know you're uh, you're utilizing things well on Pinterest. Spend 10, 15 minutes a day using reward style. Um, don't let time don't don't let it be a time suck. Set your timers like Kelly and I tell you, and just play with it and see what works for you. But Jennifer is a tried and true example of a mom who is at home making a full-time income utilizing Pinterest. And I think this is something that you're going to see more and more as time goes on. Up to now, we've thought, you know, blogs are a way to make money from home. Sure. But there, we have to think outside the box. And Jennifer had this amazing um, Pinterest following and figured out a way to um, let it supplement her household income. And, you know, as soon as you have companies calling you saying, we want to buy your board, that is your hello wake-up call saying, I have something good here, okay? So how can I benefit my family with this, right? right. I mean, that's, that's the way that I totally see it. So any final thoughts, Jennifer? If anybody has any final questions, if you want to ask them now, we can get them in. And then, Jennifer, if there was anything that you want to touch on before we go, I think we've pretty much covered everything. No, I think that's it. Thank you guys. This was fun. Yes, isn't it so fun? If we could just if we could just get Google Plus to love us. And <laughs> guys, we're so sorry. The the mishaps are out of our control. And this time we didn't even know that there was an issue until you guys started saying we can't see you. Because on our end everything looked good. I mean it's just we get just frustrated. It's completely beyond our control. All right, Kelly, any final thoughts, woman? No. No? <laughs> You're so sidetracked. Well, guys, I want you to go in and um, look at these programs that uh, Jennifer is talking about. Go in and look at Reward Style. Their customer service is great. Um, I have found. Don't you agree, Jennifer? I mean, they Absolutely. help you get up. They're so nice. They they're, spend, they're very responsive. They're great. Um, yeah. They'll spend time with you on the phone getting everything set up. Um, they're really super nice. But give it a try. See if it works for you. 
go in and make sure that your Pinterest account, your boards are set up um, to optimize things for you and start tracking your analytics um, within Pinterest so that you can see where you're getting, where your efforts are bringing you um, success. And go in and look at how Jennifer's doing her Pinterest, follow her, and um, go in and see her methods and how she uses Pinterest each day and take those uh, things that you observe and try to apply them to your daily blogging too. So that's it. Um, if you have more questions, leave them on the event page and we will do our very best to answer them. Um, Kelly and I are still taking, we would like to start our, our third class next week, next Monday, um, but that's not going to happen at this point if we don't get some more people. We don't have quite enough people signed up to um, to have a class for the next, so it's a one week, uh, it's a class that lasts for a month and every Monday we walk you through holding your hand, uh, taking your blog to the next level. So and Kelly, they're really, really, really good at holding your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I am a crayons and paper kind of girl, so I have to have, like, you've got to draw me a picture. So I try to do the same thing for people. Well, too. I just have to tell you everybody out there that they seriously are, they're so good and if you can take the class, absolutely take it. It's helped me so much. I've learned so much in the short time that I've been working with them. They've been invaluable. Thank well, you. we really appreciate that, Jennifer. We, this is, you know, we just, we love what we're doing, and we love finding people like you that can, we can all grow with each other. There's enough room out there for everybody, guys. There is. There's enough room out there for everybody, and I cannot tell you enough how much I love Jennifer's story and how she took a Pinterest, monetized it, and then figured out a way to make to turn that into a blog. And that's what we have to do. We have to think outside the box and make these things work for us and our family. So, all right, guys, we will see you next week. We're gonna leave the link for the class if you're interested. We would love to have you. Go and play on Pinterest. Yes, go play on Pinterest. Set your timer. Don't let it be a time suck, okay? All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Y'all have an awesome week, okay? Bye. Bye.